time. However, do you know he's always going to be ready and set to go 12 rounds, and will he get a chance to fight for the title again? That's the problem. Well, that's true, Tommy. And, and you know, like watching him again at the last uh, couple of rounds, he gave it 100%. He still got some... He's still got some fight left, I think. I, 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 my heart goes out to Jorge because he's a dear friend of mine. But uh, then again, on the same token, on the other side of the coin, you don't want to see him staying there too long. All right, Michael Carvajal is up next. The little hands of stone, the 25-year-old undefeated out of Phoenix, has been a sensation. I said earlier tonight, pound for pound, he might be the heaviest hitter in all of boxing. He's only 108 pounds, but he's got a left hand that any fighter in any age, in any weight, in any division would love to have. That was against Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez. Surprisingly, knocked down twice. Here comes another punch that'll send Carvajal Hall to the deck. I think the true test of this champion is that he gets up, and now, after going down in the seventh round, dispatches Gonzalez with the sweetest left hand you'll ever see. Well, at a time when it didn't look like he was going to be able to get him up. Down he went. Only a second left in the seventh round when he went down. And he's gonna come and this straight is... at Michael, but that's what's gonna make Michael look good. As always, you know, uh, they're made for him. Anybody who comes and wants to make a war with Michael, they got a war and they're gonna get their butt kicked. So, come on down. That was Danny Carbohall, Michael's brother, a trainer and uh, what have you. And uh, he was quite emphatic about it. You wanna fight, this is the kid that'll give you one, meaning uh, brother Michael Carbohall. And I tell you, his record would indicate that is entirely correct. Into the ring as Carbajal comes down the aisle. Already is the Korean Olympic gold medalist, Hwang San Kim. He's only six and one in professional fighting. Has nine medals from Olympic competition. And is ranked number six by the WBC and the WBA. But There's Carbajal. And collectively, we've got a lot of Olympic boxing wins in there, don't we, with the silver and gold medalists of uh, the Olympics, uh, two different weight categories in there. Michael Buffer set to introduce the fighter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, along with Forum Boxing in association with the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Bruce Lane, Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. Chief Inspector Ringside, Mark Ratner. Three physicians in attendance, Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. James Wishgame, and Dr. Al Capanna. The timekeepers are Al Bicek and Jane Broadfoot. This bout is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation and the World Boxing Council. IBF Supervisor Ringside, Al Goodman. WBC Supervisor, Hector Garcia. The three judges assigned to score this bout on the 10-point must system are Chuck Jampa, Glenn Hamada, and Dae Yun Chung. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace, here in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Well, rounds of boxing for the IBF WBC late flyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the green trunks and weighs in at 108 pounds. His professional record is six and one with four KOs. He earned his way here tonight with performance, not numbers. Let's show our appreciation to this fighter who has traveled halfway around the world for this chance tonight from Seoul, Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this 1988 Olympic gold medal champion, now ranked number five in the world, the challenger, Hong Soon Kim! 
and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red letters, weighing in also at 108 pounds. This 1988 silver medalist was the first U.S. Olympian in 88 to win a world championship. His record as a pro, 28 and 0, 16 by KO. He is considered by many to be, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world today. From Phoenix, Arizona, presenting the undefeated right flyweight champion of the world, Las Maritas de Piedra, Michael again obey my commands at all times shake hands and good luck all right the tail of the tape carvajal and kim 25 kim's 29 he's an inch shorter they're both at 108 and carvajal has the longer reach by three inches and of course the greater pro career as you watch the rules ibf wbc three knockdown rule not in effect no standing eight count saved by the bell the last round only and only the referee can stop the fight Joining us also at ringside is Jennifer Kim, no relation to the young man from Seoul, Korea, who's in the ring, and she'll act as an interpreter as we check in with Kim and uh, his corner from time to time throughout the fight. Barbara Hall, a prohibitive favorite, Al. He is an almost eight to one favorite, which some people think is rather high, and the reason they think it's high is because when he fought Humberto Gonzalez, Kim went well into the 12th round, was winning that fight before he got knocked out. So this is a young man, and that may be the most salient point to remember as you look at this bout. And of course, Gonzalez, for anyone that saw that great match between he and Carball, they know what a great fighter he is. So that's why Kim is here with those short number of uh, fights and all the rest. He's a tough guy. Carbo Hall unified the IBF and WBC light flyweight titles in that victory over Humberto Gonzalez back in March. I can't tell you, and I'm sure, Al, you've heard the same thing. People who saw it thought it might have been the best fight they ever saw. I don't know that I've ever called one that's better. I was there for Hagler Hearns and a lot of others. It, it was spectacular. Both men with a great effort. Now, Carbo Hall in this bout doing a very smart thing. He's staying on the outside, not allowing Kim to get in. A little uppercut from Kim on the inside. Carvajal looks like a man who's studying his opponent very, very closely and waiting for that one shot, that one chance. And with the electrifying punching power that Carvajal has, especially in that left hand, why he could um, close escrow in a very big hurry. Huh? <laughs> you know, the uh, the way Kim is ducking in, you'll start to see the Carball uppercut. There it is. <laughs> well, right on cue. Amen. Thank, thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a good one. He's got, he's got almost every punch it, that you can have in your arsenal. See, there, there is Kim working well on the inside. This is not a guy who does not have offensive firepower. Chiquita Gonzalez found that out. Oh. You, you don't throw double left hooks better than that. Carvajal just showed you a, a clinic on how to throw those two punches. We've had 32 rounds of boxing so far. I don't think anybody expected the three previous bouts to go the distance that they did. Two 10-rounders and Pendleton's 12-round defense of his lightweight title. Now, Kim has only fought once in the 13 months since he lost to Gonzalez, so he could be a little rusty in there, too, in these first couple rounds. That's the end of round number one. We'll follow Carvajal back to his corner, brother Danny. Well, 
Well, Danny Carvajal explaining this when Kim comes in, work him to the body, and then go upstairs. And they also want, what he also meant was those uppercuts on the inside, lifting him up in effect. You know, I asked Danny um, earlier in the week, Al, that perhaps that Gonzalez fight had taken something out of the champion. He said he didn't think so. He thought, in fact, he was quite emphatic about saying, I think it took a lot out of Gonzalez. <laughs> Their contention is that a lot of the punches Gonzalez threw, while many landed, many didn't because they were picked off by Carvajal. And people uh, who studied the fight game religiously and with uh, great knowledge say that in that fight, at the close of every round, even the ones where Carvajal went down, that he was in control at the end of almost each and every round. Yeah, that's basically true. And that's not to demean what Gonzalez did in that fight, but Carvajal performed very well. Now, Kim, you have to assume he might have had a little nervousness. His first fight here in America uh, against a top guy. And uh, might have been a little tense in there and may loosen up a little bit more. You know what's astonishing? I was amazed to see the statistic. No Korean fighter has ever come to the United States and actually won a title. That's right. And, and that's got to be preying on him as well. There's got to be a lot of national pride involved and a lot of national intention in Seoul and in South Korea. This young guy coming halfway around the world, as Buffer said, and fighting one of the great champions in any division. Yeah, he's got to have... Uh, the weight of the world on his shoulders, so to speak, doesn't he? And there have been 18 men who have preceded him trying to do it from Korea. Now, there was a Korean title holder who defended his title here in the United States, but none has ever come here and won it. And I watched one of them try, Yung Suk Wen against Donald Curry, in an interesting fight. There's a good right hand by Carvajal, and, and, and I don't know that that didn't hurt Kim. Sure it did. He's very quick to grab and hold. Round two, about a minute and a half to go, a little less. This is scheduled for 12, of course. I think Kim is a little in awe of the situation now, Tom. I, I think right now he is not able to get loose like he wants to to throw punches. He just looks tight. Yeah, he does, and you know, he really hasn't broken a sweat, has he, Al? No, huh? and that's one of the ways you can tell. And Carvajal, his body has a sheen to it. He's warmed up, ready to go. And Kim is a little slow in that regard. Excellent right hand to the body by Carvajal. The great body puncher. Now Kim is starting to throw punches on the inside a little bit better. I'll tell you though, when you hit Michael Carvajal, you wake him up sometimes. <laughs> Now, they wanted the uppercut from Carball, but Kim able to land his own there a moment ago. So, a little better second round for Kim. Kind of hard to really get a line on Kim. You know, only a record of 6-1. and one, A great performance against Gonzalez and a near miss. Nice combination. Great amateur career. But we're, the we're seeing now what, what, what he brings to the dance. Good inside fighting. All right, Jennifer Kim has joined us here at ringside and we'll let her tell us what's going on over there. Hold Korea, hold Korea, Joe. See woman, hold Korea. Joe, Joe, make sure he can see out of that eye. Me not hear about you. Now, please let me hear about the eyes. Have he heard his eyes? Tell him to tell me he can see. Some concern from one of the ringside doctors as to whether or not Kim is having an eye problem. Okay. He says, don't wait. Don't wait. Just push and go in for it. Go for it. Don't wait. Well, at the end of that round, Kim was being more aggressive and uh, landing shots in the inside against Carbajal. And when he was more aggressive, uh, he did some good work on the inside. Well, there is some concern. I think it's the right eye. Is that correct, Jennifer? Right eye. Kim's right eye, and it does look um, very much like it's half closed. Yeah, there was a lot of swelling there. They used the end swell very effectively on it, but we'll see how effective, in fact, that was. Yeah, oh, that is really closing fast. And I'll tell you, Michael Carball, you made the point, Tom, has one of the best. Oh, big right by Kim. Carball has one of the best left hooks around, 
So he'll go to work on that eye. Up into the jab. This is round three of this title bout scheduled for 12. What a night we've had here at Caesars Palace. Richard Steele cautioning Kim. Now here's sign where, language, of course. Here is where they want the uppercuts from Carbajal and the body work, which he gives them. There's the uppercut. Kim landed a couple of solid left hands himself. Less combination punches from Carbajal than we're used to seeing. But that was true during parts of the Gonzalez fight as well, but then he came on to use great combinations. You're watching the championship fight between Carbajal and Kwang Sun Kim from Korea. We're in round three, halfway through it. Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. There's four hot bouts. We've got them here tonight, and this is number four. All have gone the distance in the preceding ones. Castro a winner in 10 over Kim, no relation to this man. Rafael Reyes, a winner. He went 10 with Daryl Tyson. Nice shot by Carbajal. 12 rounds and Pendleton defends his IBF lightweight title with a unanimous win over Jorge Paez. And that brings us to Kim and Carbajal and round three. Good right hand landed by Carbajal a moment ago, but Kim did, was not shaken by it. Kim is, is landing pretty well here. All things considered, he's getting some shots home against Michael Carbajal. You know, the, uh, Carbajal has allowed Kim to come to him. I wonder if it, if they might not be thinking now, let's back him up. Because you'll notice when Carbajal does back him up, I don't think Kim's the kind of guy that fights well going backwards. Well, you can count on one hand and order four beers, the guy. <laughs> Good point. The guys that can fight backing up. Right by Kim there. <laughs> yeah, there are a few, but not that many. You're correct. Well, we'll take a look at Kim as we follow him back to his corner. Hey, a sideways glance from Kim. Yeah. All right, Jennifer, bring us up to date. Okay, he says he was waiting. Don't wait for him and uh, 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 check his punch and just go for it. Uh, are they concerned about the eye? They're working uh, on yes, it. Yes, yes. They are very concerned about his eyes. And he says, just when you go for the punch, just keep on going and don't wait for him to come into him. Okay. So they want him to be more aggressive. Is yes, that correct, yes. Jennifer? And I'll tell you, as well as they've done with that end swell on the eye, it hasn't stopped that eye from swelling, almost in closing almost completely shut. Right eye could be indeed a problem before this is all over. Wang Sun Kim in the green trunks. Champion Michael Carbajal in white. Carbajal's IBF WBC titles on the line. He's the light flyweight champion of the world. And among the 10 top fighters in the world is considered one of the best in any division. No question he's in the top 10. I mean, he's, he's proven his ability against really some very tough guys. Gonzalez Cuesta was a good fighter. Uh, the likes of uh, Jose Velarde, Pacheco wasn't a bad fighter he fought. I mean, he's, these guys are not household names to people in America, but they're, they're good boxers. I tell you, Carbajal is uh, a bit wary of Kim as well in this fight out. He's, he's not taking anything for granted. And now a very bad swelling around the left eye of Carbajal. A big bump just emerged. Whether it came from the head or punches, I don't know. Oh. Drops a right hand on Kim and another one. I'll Boy, tell you he's what. really got a mouse under that left Yeah. Hand. Michael Carbajal, and that had to come from a flash of head. I mean, there's no way that could even have come, I don't think, from a punch. And the way Kim is coming in with his head, Michael Carbajal better back him up. That's the thing I think that I'm sure Danny Carbajal will tell. Big right by Kim. Well, most of his fights are not easy, are they? No. Carbajal. He 
He has really got a bump under that left eye, and Kim's got a right eye that looks as though it's about to slam shut at any moment. And Carbo Hall and he are forehead to forehead now. It's become what it always does with Carbo Hall, a war, and that's what he's in right now. Huge Solid right. right. But I'll tell you, he's not getting Kim to go back, is he yet? No, not backing him up at all. In fact, it might be the other way around. It's another one of those rounds where we've had them all night, where there's some outstanding exchanges. And Kim is coming in with that head straight. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure pretty soon he shouldn't get a point deducted or a warning about it. Boy, that is a big lump under the right eye, uh, the left eye of Carbohol. Huge hook and a right uppercut. I don't know if that hurt Carbohol. I've seen this in a lot of fights with Carbohol, even before he won the championship. He gives his people a heart attack every time he fights. And his fans, I might add. And, he, and what he's given to Kim right now is a lot of confidence, don't you think, Tom? Uh, no question about it. Kim and believes he belongs in the ring with him. Oh, indeed, with every passing moment, with every punch he throws and lands, with every shot Carbajal hits him with that he takes and keeps coming. There's the bell. That takes care of round four. I tell you, it's been an interesting fight, no question about it. Now look at they as they work out underneath the left eye of Carball. That is a big. That's the size of a golf ball. Big abrasion. Good work, though. That's how you use that end swell. A lot of pressure, pushing it off to the side, pushing the swelling away. And look how look how effective it is right now. We believe this came from a clash of heads. Kim, Kim coming in. Oh man, was it ever! Came right in with his head. And then later in the round, Kim landing some pretty good shots on the inside. Harbaugh trying to land that left uppercut. Kim runs across the ring at the bell to start round number five. Good move by Carball to get out of that corner. Excellent move over. Well, we told you earlier about the obvious dedication, conditioning that the uh, Korean fighters have brought into the ring here tonight. And Kim is certainly uh, living proof of that. As was his predecessor in the ring. That's right. Also. Now, I'll tell you what. The, when their heads are banging on the inside like that, it's just very dangerous for both men. And the way Kim is coming in, Carball's going to have to start landing an uppercut. There it is. Well, every time I say that, he goes to it. In addition to the champion, one of Kim's biggest problems seems to be keeping his trunks up. He's worried about that. Well, I'll tell you what, all joking aside, that kind of distraction can lose you a fight. Indeed. Carball now starting to get his jab in. That will be an important weapon for him. This is round number five. Kim with an excellent counter right over the jab of Carball. That's how you know Kim's a smart, a smart fighter, not just a brawler. He took about six Carball jabs, waited for the chance to counter over that jab. So we're not looking at some bulldog in there that doesn't know about boxing. But this guy was an Olympic fighter. It just seemed forever, 82 to 88. Had a magnificent amateur career, won the gold medal in 88. Barbara Hall was the silver medalist. And how about your second chance at a title? He's only had seven pro fights. That's right. And, and both times acquitting himself well, because no matter what happens here, we are, he's already acquitting himself well. Takes Gonzalez 12 rounds, gets knocked out, and loses a chance at the crown. But Gonzalez had to pull out all the stops. Uh, right. Heroic effort. Right now, Michael Carbajal having a very time, hard time getting off. He's normally a very accurate puncher, a lot of combinations. He's allowing Kim to get inside, and Kim is making the most of his opportunity. Look at Michael Carbajal knows that right hand's coming. You see him move his head, and it wasn't yep. even thrown. Yep. 
the, the awkward style of Kim actually has been a problem for Carvalho. You know, Kim is in great shape, Al. Look at the solid body on this little guy from Korea. Big set of legs on him. Now, Carvalho's jabbing to the body, and that's to set him up for a right hand. He's going to set him up for a right hand by throwing that jab downstairs. Swelling under the left eye has gone down a bit. In the case of Carvajal, we follow Kim back to his corner. A little slow getting that stool in there. In fact, it's not in there yet. Asking the trainer, Jennifer, was it? I don't know if that denotes that he's tired already, but we'll see. Was that Miguel Diaz in there that was working on his eye? Uh, yes, they do have Miguel working on his eye. You're right. Out they come for round number six. Or to put it another way, correct, oh, great one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Al Bernstein. Uh, Ruben Castillo and I certainly hope you've enjoyed this bill affair tonight. We've had a great time watching some great fights. We hope we haven't interfered with your pleasure and that you've had a good time. Top rank and forum boxing, sending it all your way. And we want to thank Jennifer Kim, too, who's with us, in case I uh, forget it at the end of this bout. You know, Carbajal, Carbajal is starting now to throw some combinations, Tom. In this round, there's been a subtle change. We'll see if it continues. Kim, Kim is a better defensive fighter than maybe we might give him credit for because Carbajal is having a very tough time getting through his defense. Now, the punch that is available are the body punches, but even those are difficult for Carbajal. And I tell you, Kim's confidence factor goes up with each second of each round that goes by. And I'm going to tell you, I've not been scoring every round, but this is a fight that I don't see how you can say Kim isn't ahead on the scorecards at this point. I think he would be, by a little maybe, but probably ahead. And I think Michael Carbajal is going to have to back him up. He's going to have to go to him. Oh, big, huge left hook to the body. Kim complaining it was low, but I don't know. I just don't know if Carball can allow Kim to come to him because he's not landing as many counter punches as he would like. And I don't think Kim wants to go backwards at all. Carbo allowing him to stay on the inside and taking some shots as a result of it. Now Carbo found he could fight Gonzalez better on the inside, but I don't know if that's true here. I will say the body work of Carbo has been special, but look at that uppercut. Solid left hand landed by Kim. Snapped Carbo Hall's head back. here in round six, but Carball now starting to take control of it with the left hook. And if I was him, I'd be cranking that left hook until I couldn't throw it anymore, because that's the punch I think Kim is susceptible to, to the body and the head. Can you believe this, Kim? He is... I don't think Kim understands Carvajal's the champion or how good he's supposed to be. Well, look, he can't read his press clippings in this country because he doesn't read <laughs> English. Sigue, sigue agarrando esos golpes al cuerpo, okay? Reach over and dig. If he stays there, dig. Plant yourself and dig. Crack one of them ribs, okay? You're doing fine. You're doing good. I just don't, don't want you to stay too close to him because he's trying to use that head like a damn ram, okay? You don't think nada aquí. Ya no trae nada, ya se está cansando, man. Not 
the most confident corner I've seen in this fight tonight. No, but I, I think the key thing here is they want that body work. I think that the way that Carvajal will find a way to win this fight, if he's to win it, is by going downstairs. Out they come for round seven. Kim and Green. Neither man has been down and both have been punished. Kim has got a uh, right eye that since the opening round has threatened just to close up and say goodnight. And it's amazing, isn't it, given the fact that Carvajal has such a good left hook that he's not been able to take advantage of that more than he has. Yep. And I think that's, that's just a failing on his part to really go get the job done. I, I don't think he realizes that that maybe is his ticket to this fight. Because when he doubles up with that left to the body net, he's very effective. Carvajal in white, and Kim is in green. Lands a right and a left of his own. There's a big Korean delegation here, and they're on their feet cheering. And I'll tell you, Kim's right hand must be a lot quicker than, than we, we would think, and that Carvajal thought, because Michael Carvajal is getting hit with it a lot tonight. And we're at the point in this fight where I have to tell you, Michael Carball has got to be thinking, am I behind in this bout? Now, he was behind in the, in the Gonzalez fight and pulled it out. And I'll tell you what, right now, I'd say he's behind by in this fight as well. Maybe not by much, but he's behind. Good right hand by Carball. That may have stunned him, but how would you know it, huh? Exactly. He doesn't have any gears in reverse. Everything is straight ahead. And Carvajal not able to follow up when he does nail him with a big shot. Kim is throwing more punches. Forehead to forehead. The jab of Carvajal has been rendered pretty much useless because he's not landing it. So what he's left with is he has to start his attack to the body. Now, they're right there is where the double left hook. Oh, that oh, one. Wow. Left hand and down went Kim. The left hand we talked about. Oh. King is rubber leg. He's through. Michael Carvajal caught him with that one shot. You know, I, Unbelievable. Just, I would just said a double left hook was in order. Guess what? He didn't throw the one to the body, but the one to the head landed. Interesting. What a turnabout. Well, that's as dramatic a knockout as I've ever seen. And I tell you, all credit to Kim. He got up. He didn't have a leg literally to stand on, and he was trying to put himself together to come back. I don't think Michael Carball can be in a boring fight. Yeah. That, that knockout came at 2.23 of the round, and... We're finding out, aren't we, that the left hook of Michael Carvajal, we saw it against Gonzalez, might be one of the best around. You know, uh, Al and Tom, just like the, Carbo the, the Chiquita fight, he was showing right hands yes. all night as yes. he was here tonight, and he takes you out with the left hook. Good point, Ruben. Well, as we take a look back on it, Ruben's point is very well taken. There's the hook. And for all the world, it was a short hook, and that's why it was so powerful. And right away, Kim was up, and there was no way he was going to continue. Here it is again, short, right on the jaw, over a right hand by Kim. All night, he had been showing right hands. I thought he was a little late in going to the left hook. Here's where I said, just about now, I said a double left hook would be in order. Well, he didn't need one to the, the body. It came to the head. And, Sugar uh, Ray Robinson threw a left hook like that, and the man fell forward right in his face, just like Kim. Has to be the most devastating punch, and to his credit, the kid from Korea got up, was looking for somebody to lean against to stand there to get on, but there he is. He's, uh, well, let's go to Michael Buffer for the time. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes, 23 seconds in round number seven, the winner by knockout victory, still champion, Las Manitas de Piedra, Michael Carvajal! That is
has got to be, as we told you when this whole evening started, one of the most powerful left hands boxing has ever seen. No matter what division, what weight you're talking about, Carvajal has got a left hand for the ages. This kid can hit with it. You know, Tommy, it's, it's uh, amazing how short that left hook traveled and the way Kim went down, hurt, he still tried to get up and, and try to continue the fight. There he is, what a great fight he gave Carvajal. And he might, like Gonzalez before him, have been ahead even on points or even with him. There's another look at the shot and Kim falls forward right on his face. Here's Al Bernstein. Well, we are up in the ring here with Michael Carbo. Well, just another easy day at the office, huh? Hey, you know, I trained very hard. I want to stay champion for a very, very long time. And I want to say, I love you, Michelangelo, Michito. You guys are all my motivation. Daniela, Erica, everybody back home at Phoenix, at all the sports bars, at McKenna's, at everywhere. Hey, go party, because hey, Phoenix got the world champion. With the Suns, the Cardinals coming up, hey, we got it going on. All right, now let's talk a little bit about what went on in this fight. Early on in the fight, he was a very tough guy to deal with. He had a better defense, maybe, than you would have thought. You, were you showing him the right hand like you did with Gonzalez to get to the left hook? Well, I was catching him with a lot of jabs. I was just trying to set him up. Then he said, take your time, work the body a little bit. But on the inside, man, he gave me about two good head, but he was coming in with his head with what I was trying to get away with. And, Let's uh, take a look at the knock knockout. Perfect left hook. Yes, that left hook. After I seen him fall, I said, that's it. Hey, uh, Danny gets me in good condition. He gets me very strong. And that condition is going to keep me a champion for a very long time. Well, here's the scoring being given to us. And you were, I believe, behind on all the scorecards. No, you were ahead. Excuse me. Oh. You were way ahead. Now, that shocks me. I, honestly, I did not think you'd be way ahead in that fight. Well, I thought I was ahead on the fight. Um, I, was, I was catching him with a lot of jabs. I was trying to get away from the, from, you know, trying to get on the outside. Because on the inside, he was very dirty, pulling my head down, coming in with his head. And he was a very awkward fight. Did he hurt you with any of those overhand rights he hit you with? No, not at all. I wasn't hurt at all. Uh, I was in the best condition. And, hey, I'm ready. You know, we look at these fights. I'm going to get Danny in here. Are you nervous in the corner at all? Because Danny, or every time Michael says to us, there's no problem, and he's an honest guy. I tend to believe him. But it looks like there's problems. No, uh, there isn't. I mean, he listens to everything. Uh, sometimes, you know, he'll, he'll, if I say, Michael, you can land this, and then he'll, he'll say, well, look, I feel good if I do this. So fine, just add to it. Yeah, I don't mean problems with the car. I mean problems in the fight. I mean where where the guy may be getting to him with some shots. Well, it, it looks like it, but if you look at the tape close, uh, he he got he got his hands up. He rolls with it. These are right here. That's that a was head butt. Man, that was a, we you know, saw that. That, that, was a head butt. that guy was a ram, you know. So. But right, let me ask, with it. would you have liked to have seen him go to that left hook a little early in the fight, or did you feel like it would just come? No, we. I thought it was going to be sometime about the fifth, the sixth oh, okay. round. Okay, yeah. but it was it was, it was, it was close. And, and I was telling Michael, Michael, take your time because he was wanting to, you know, when they come and make a brawl with him, he'll show you. He'll stay there. So yeah. like, come on. Yeah. But he, he's so, he's so well conditioned that he can just set the pace, take his time, and. If anybody goes in the ninth round and he drops you in the ninth round, that's it. Yeah. One thing that you did tonight that was very special and you normally do it was the body punching. Did you feel like you hurt him with those body punches? Oh, yes. Um, you know, that's that's my favorite part about fighting is them body shots. I never forget about that body. I learned that from Roberto Duran. He's the best body puncher there ever was. And uh, I watched tapes of him and hey, that's what I did. So there's the championship belt. They're going to put it on you right now. And well deserved, of course, as you retain it. And uh, there is your one of your world championship belts. You, the body work you talked about seemed like it helped set everything up for you. You, you threw some hellacious left hooks to the body. In fact, when you threw that punch that you knocked him out with, I said about it two seconds before. I said, "Here's where a double left hook would work." But you didn't need the first one, did you? No, I didn't. I just saw the opening. Um, I figured I was gonna from the first round. I figured, man, I got him with the hook because I seen his right hand. And plus, Danny told me before the fight, he dropped his right hand when he loads up. And right there, he was about to load up and blam. Right. I don't know what you can do to top this, but congratulations, Michael. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, great win for Michael Carball. Let's go back to Tom Kelly at ringside. Thank you, Al Bernstein, and our congratulations to Michael Carball and all the rest of our fighters tonight. What a great show they put on for us. I'm Tom Kelly along here with Ruben Castillo.
It was a great night of boxing, and Carvajal capped it off with a brilliant left hand, and down went Kim from Korea. Well, that's uh, something very common for Michael Carvajal, as we alluded to the to the uh, Chiquita Gonzalez fight. What a tremendous courage in, in Michael that, you know, I thought he was behind, honestly. I did, too. So did Al, and yet he was ahead on all cards, which I thought was a surprise when I heard the announcement. And, of course, we had other great fights. Ruelas, a very fine winner over Tyson, and we had a great fight as Pendleton defended his IBF lightweight title against Jorge Paez. And once again, Paez proved that he still has a lot of heart left, and I still think he's got fight left uh, for the future and in his career. All right, let's go back to Al Bernstein for a question. Al, if you will, we'll pick your brains a little bit. Ruelas and Pendleton, give me a quick thought on that first. Well, I'll tell you what, I think uh, Rafael Ruelas and Freddie Pendleton is going to be one of the best lightweight fights in the last couple of years. They have similar styles. They're both big punchers, and that one prediction I make, it'll end in a knockout. All right, then give me a thought, if you will, on what's next for Carbajal. Anybody in well, mind? Well, they want to unify the title. I think that's what they're looking to do, but there are constantly tough guys that he has to face. I think we'll see him try and unify the title, and then, Tom, it's going to be very tough. He's going to have to move up or down in weight to see if he can get something going. All right, thank you, Al Bernstein, and thank all of you. For Ruben Castillo, Al Bernstein, I'm Tom Kelly. For Top Rank, and of course, Forum Boxing, we thank you for being with us from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Hope you enjoyed the evening we did. See you soon. Bye-bye.